All right, ladies and gentlemen. I, I started working on this before. I was gonna put this head on this hatchet and I don't, one, I don't like this head on this handle. And, and I, you can see I tried fitting it and I've been working with it. I don't like it. I don't like the head anyways. I'm probably gonna give this away. But this one, now this one's been, some idiot was, God knows what he was beating on. So the end of this is kind of damaged. I'll just clean it up a little bit. But I don't like the straight handle on this one. So I'm gonna take it off and put it on this one and I'm gonna put this one on this because I like the curved, I don't know, I think it'll fit better. You know how you do something sometimes and you back up and punt and you think that was stupid? Also, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this. This is, cr I don't know if it's cracked or if that metal is folded over like that. Looks cracked. I don't know. I don't know a lot about hatchets. This one's not marked anywhere. It's real rough. The way it's, it's been milled, like at the factory, it's got uh, that, I know, that's factory. And that, I'm pretty sure that's factory, the way it's dimpled like that. The way it's, I don't know, it's, it, it doesn't feel like some of the, even the 1930 and 40s, uh, hatchets that I got but if you look closely and that you'd almost think that was a someone tried to cut it with a welder but I don't know and then the crack comes all the way around like that so I don't know if I'm gonna hit this with the welder and, and just I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that. But the metal, it's cut. I don't know how to look. If you look at it, it's like cut. Oh well, who knows. Anyways, that's my plan. Take one off, put it on the other, and see what it looks like. But first I gotta get the nails and screws out. So let me do that real quick and dry fit it, see what it looks like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in the center, Well, let's see if that's deep enough. Well, that's what it is, a broken screw. I guess you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Yep, that's what it was, a little broken screw. All right, wonder if this thing will come out now. Yeah, this is gonna work. It's gonna work better with this one, yeah. It's spread out, so now I've gotta, I'm gonna have to sand her down just a little bit to get it in there. Wonder if I can squeeze that. There's no more of that shim in there, is there? Hang on. No.
No, that's the end. That's that's it. That's how they had it like that. Well, they cut it at an angle. Yeah, they did. I think there's a little bit left in there. Right there. looks like there we got a little bit out now if I squeeze yeah I'm gonna have to squeeze that together to get that to go in Boy, it's gonna be a tight 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 that in there okay let's stop there let's look at this one I want to see if the crack is through all right where's my little brush there it is Flashlight, hang on. No, that's that crack must be in manufacturing. Let's see if you guys can see that. That's a line, that's not cracked inside. Huh never seen that before it's like the metal was folded over well I guess I don't know enough about forging or handmade that's a line that's is that's not a crack that is a line okay Huh. Maybe that's just, maybe this is just a cheap Chinese manufacturing back in the day. Who knows? But look at the, somebody, this is mill. This is factory. Huh. All right, guys, I'm stumped. I've never seen one with something that looks like a crack. But that's jagged. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I'll put it together and just see what it looks like. I'll use a, I'll probably use the belt sander to clean that edge a little bit, as long as it don't get, well, it might get too hot. Probably use the file. Let's just use the file on that before going any further. Now, before going further, let's go to the belt sander, just clean it off, just to see if there's anything else hidden under that little bit of rust. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no name, any markings, but there's a lot of like scratches. I'm trying to figure out what the scratches are this way. Huh.
I'm going to brush down the inside a little more just to look at it. This is uh, kind of different. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here, here. Let's see if I can get the camera. There's, see, that's cracked. I put a small amount of liquid carburetor cleaner on that and it came out on the backside. So that crack, that split is all the way through. So I think what I'm gonna do with this is just cut a groove with the uh, grinder wheel, cut off wheel, something like that. Not go very deep, just go uh, maybe quarter inch, less than a quarter inch, 3 16 or so. Cut a groove in that and then weld it with some 7018, which is 70,000 tensile strength. Why would it split like that though? Only thing I, in the metal, man, the metal's not bad quality. It's, uh, as soon as I hit it with the wire, it just shined up instantly. Huh. Anyways, I don't know. I, I don't think this is handmade just because it looks like down here, looks like if you look real close, you can see a, like a molted metal spot there. I think this was done in a factory. But it must not have been that there must have been factory and it was damaged and they went and shipped it out anyways. And that's what caused the crack. I'm thinking I could be wrong. Somebody tell me different. I, I don't know. I've never seen. I have seen pictures of forged units. Uh, where they fold the metal, that's not, that's nothing folded there, that's cracked. And I know it's cracked because liquid's coming out the other side. All right, that's my next project. Uh, I probably won't show it because it'll be hard to show on camera, but what I'm, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this, make a V groove, all the way down from one end to the end, and I'll go about three sixteenths of an inch. I think that'll be plenty. Then I'll weld two or three, probably three passes, and then grind it down. I'll show the weld uh, that I have on it, and then I'll just grind it. I'll just grind it flat. In 7018 welding rod, I'll use stick welder. And that way I can get 70,000 pound tensile strength on this, and I think that should be just fine. And the reason I say that is this is just a hatchet. This is not going to be cutting down a three-foot tree. Uh, so there's no need to, to take a lot of this off, to grind all this off and make a V-groove. I think if I just cut me a groove down the center here, a V-groove, and then weld it, I think that'll be just fine. Anyways, maybe tomorrow I'll have that done. Let's uh, see if I can't dry fit this real quick. All right, I dry fit it. I, didn't, I don't have it all the way down, but I'm gonna take a little bit off, just lightly sand around here in the backside and maybe a little on this side because this side's really tight. This side's getting even tighter right here. And I, I don't see as much on this side. It's shaped a little off, I think. Go on the sander and try it. Squeeze it with a pair of channel locks to get it on there.
yeah, you can see you can see where there's a lot more meat on that side than there is on this side. It's a little shaped wrong, so just take a little off. All right, before I go any further, I'm just going ahead and scrape. Use a, I'm just going to use a razor knife and just scrape all the paint best I can with it first. Just scrape it all down and then I'll sand it with some 220. But that's just to get the handle ready to put on the head. All right, I sanded it down with 220. You can see there were, they, you know, did some damage to the handle, but it's not bad. There was a couple of nicks where they struck over. Anyways. Still tight. Still tight. It's curling and it's not. It's I'm hitting dead hard. So probably gonna have to take it off and sand it a little bit more. Yeah, I'm now I'm gonna have a struggle to get it off. But I'll work it off and then see what I mean on one side. One side it's going good. One side it's just too much. I need to take more off of this side. Oh well. All right guys, did I ever screw up? And I know somebody's gonna catch it, but look what I did. I just grabbed my other hammer, thought I'll hit it with the other, and that's what I get for being in a hurry. I had a dumbass moment. That sucks. Well, I need to, sh I need, I need to take more wood off anyways. It's just, it's, it's getting too hard to hammer. I'm afraid I'll hit it and I'll miss a strike and I'm gonna split the wood because this is old wood. Huh, but I'll show you. Stupid mistake, and I was hammering it on camera upside down. Ah! Finally, getting somewhere. Let's go a little further with this thing. I'm having, ah, that's it, I'm done with this. I'm not gonna use this much anyways. This, this will probably gift anyhow, so. It's been a lot of trouble. See if I can get it down just a little bit more. Shouldn't be using that steel hammer like that, but oh yeah, it's going down more. All right, let me set it just a tad bit more and then we'll, uh, ooh, that shim's gonna be tight in there. See if I can get a shim in that. All right, trim this down enough, maybe. Nope, it's still too wide. My wedge is a little wide. Now, let me trim a little bit more. All right, let's see if this shim will fit right there. Swing the camera over here. Hang on a second.
That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's in there. This video is going to be long, I'm sorry, but I'm not good at this, and I always second-guess myself, so, hmm, and that's in there, that's dead, that's like hitting dead, I didn't mark it, I should have marked it with a pencil so I could guide it, but, It's just bouncing on the anvil. All right, uh, let me trim this off on the bandsaw. Whew. That thing's heavy. I got a little bit right there that didn't, oh, sorry. Little bit right there on top. See that little cavity? But man, is it swedging on there pretty tight. So, use this metal sham here <laughs> yep, filled it in good god I gotta, I gotta watch my camera sorry let me sand this down I'll be right back all right, got this one done. I'm, I'm leaving that. It's, once I soak this with uh, the uh, linseed oil, it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty good. I, I don't see a problem with that. Now that is, that is swedged in there pretty darn good. All right, let's, uh, let's work on the other one. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welded the back end of this and it not too bad I'm gonna I think the next thing I need to do is just go ahead and fix the, the blade part of it and then clean this up yeah that's probably what I need to do go ahead and clean it up and there's nicks and scrapes all over this thing. Shoot. Anyways, I wanted to show you the welded it 7018 and uh, didn't weld down in the inside, but cut enough groove down in the center that filled it in and capped it. So I'm not worried about it at all. I just need to clean it up now make it look nice. I think we grounded too much off of it already. Oh well, just wanted to show you before I go hog wild on, on taking a file to it. That's probably what I need to do is just go ahead and take a file to it.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where I'm at on this video, but I'm gonna clean, try to clean the end of this up on the belt sander and go from there. I'm gonna run it over this fiber wheel. I want to use this fiber wheel up, so I'm not getting all the nicks and scratches out of it, the weld marks. It, uh, I mean, this is, <laughs> I'm going too far with this one. This is just a junk hatchet. It's nothing fancy, it's uh, just a good old used tool. And it wasn't usable to begin with, really, because it was cracked. I don't think it could have been dangerous, but I don't know. I don't know enough about hatches. I've been reading. I'll leave a website. There's a, a website for the Forestry Service that has a really good article on hatchets and axes. But anyways, let's get to this. That's just a few minutes on. I think this is a 400 grit. That's the rough side. That's the side I just did. I won't fast forward this, I'll leave it real time. That's the side I just did, and that's the original side. So now I'm gonna go to the 320. Oops.
just so if anybody wants to see this is the 320 grit that I got here recently see the difference That's 320, and that's the 400. I really can't tell that much difference at all. I was going to kind of polish this. I think I'm going to blue it. I think all I'm going to do is just polish this back in. Heck, let's just do it now. That's it. I didn't fast forward nothing. Quick and easy. That's a, that's some hard steel now. It polishes just almost instantly. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I, I did all I'm gonna do to this. Oops, I gotta take a Dremel and get that spot weld out of there. There's a there's a catch in there inside there. There's a little bit on the inside there. Anyways, I'll take a dremel of that. But what I was going to say is, I do not like these lacquered handles at all. There's something about the feel of the smooth. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't feel natural. I don't know how to explain it. But that's me. I do not like. Uh, let me get the sticker off. These have had from the factory I guess they put a coating on it and I do not like it so what I am going to do is I'm going to sit here and scrape all this lacquer off and then sand it down with a 220 and get it back to the original wood the best I can because this sucks anyways I'll be back in a few minutes alright ladies and gentlemen I scraped it with a knife and then went over it with 220 paper and it's so smooth that you can feel the wood. It's different. I don't know. If you ever take, just try it sometime if you guys haven't done it. Take a, take a handle that's got coated, brand new handles coated with lacquer, scrape the lacquer off with a box knife, and then go back over it with a 220 sandpaper, and you can feel the wood. It just, there's a difference, and it feels good. And I, I'm, I'm never for painting wood. Uh, when I was younger, we built cabinets, made trim, crown mold, you name it, I did it. And wood should be stained. You should glorify the grain. You should make the grain stand out and be seen. Those of you that paint wood, why put up wood? Just concrete masonite and, and call it good there's no reason to stick wood up and then paint it even pine has a grain has a pine has a beauty to it and it, it some people don't realize how beautiful a piece of wood can be and that it even cheap wood unless it's something like finger groove uh, I can see that maybe not staining that but 
I abstain it, it don't bother me. Uh, wood should be seen, not hiding it. Uh, even cheap old plywood, you can buy the cheapest plywood and I can make a nice looking cabinet out of it. And you can see the grain. That there's some people that paint everything and think it looks good. It, first of all, when you paint wood, if you have to go back and touch it up, it's harder. You can stain wood and I can touch up stained wood easier and faster than I can painted wood. Anyways, that's my gripe there. I, I never understood why someone would hide the beauty of wood. Even cheap wood has some, some look to it. Anyways, now, oh, this is gonna fit good. I gotta we'll dry fit it a couple times. Hell, I can almost dry fit it by hand here. Man, that's gonna look good. Uh, you know what, before I do this, I need to clean that holes up in there and then I need to uh, I need to blue this thing be back in a little bit all right guys I'm gonna clean this real quick and then uh, put some bluing on it uh, someone asked me the other day about where I get my uh, linen from my towels and stuff I don't reuse or wash my linen I uh, buy in bulk from a linen service uh, these linen services that service hospitals and uh, hotels, things like that, if you have a service near you, uh, buy them in bulk. They will sell it to you. Uh, a lot of your route guys don't know. You may have to call. You may have to call the distributor or whoever in your area that does this, but. Uh, you can buy towels, linen in bulk, and you can buy some of it is actually, uh, the word I'm looking for, sanitized. They're actually, uh, sterilized. So, some of it, it depends. Like clinics and hospitals, they have to have a certain grade of linen, so, uh, if you're in an area where you can buy it in bulk, I highly recommend you buy it. Uh, now, if you don't have the place to store it, because I normally I buy like uh, two or three 55-gallon bags. I don't mean the little 35-foot iron. I mean 55-gallon trash bags full, and uh, it's more than I can carry by myself. So I have a place I can store it. So that's what I do. It's a, it's a good tip if you, uh, if you want. It's good stuff. I mean, when I'm done with it, normally I wear them out. They're, they're not cleanable anyways. They got too many chemicals and stuff on them. You, nobody would want to wash them. That's it, see, I just, I, I got this, uh, these are uh, fitted, I think these are fitted bath blankets. Anyways, they're fitted sheets, and I just cut them up into squares. They're very absorbent, and they're cotton, so pretty clean. So now, I am going to stain. This is the last of this brown. I, bought, I got a new bottle. came in the mail. Uh, I ordered it off of Amazon, and I got it in six days. Uh, Rusty Oakey said that they was back ordered, but luck I must have got mine in at the right time. I like this stuff. Uh, I got several videos of using it, so I'm very confident of it, and it does. Look at the color. Look at that. Look how black it does, real almost instantly. And you know what? I was at Walmart and I still forgotten the cotton swabs. <laughs> oh well. Ain't no biggie. Hey, look how... I'm gonna try, since I, this is the last of this bottle that I got here, I'm gonna try three coats on this.
You know, cold bluing, it's not the ideal uh, rust preventator. I think the nickel or the chrome plating is probably the best way to go, but I don't have the facility to do that. I could probably do nickel plating. I do like powder coating. Oh, I love powder coating. Powder coating is probably one of the uh, best ways to go, but I don't want to take up space in my shop for that. If you guys got room for it, that's fine and good. I do know someone that does powder coating. Uh, and he's complaining that he doesn't have a big enough oven now that uh, he's he's get, he's doing stuff for people and now he's wanting a bigger oven so and the, that and also I don't want the powder I don't want that material in my shop I don't want I don't want to deal with that leftover over spray and things like that anyways Bluing, cold bluing, it's good. It for for hand tools, I think it's just fine. Tools look good. They uh, see. Now, some of you guys have watched my videos know this. This video is probably going to be long. Sorry, I don't like editing stuff out of my videos because there might be something someone might need to see or some of you guys have watched my videos before fast forward to what you want to see I don't care it doesn't make me feel bad I mean these these tools are expensive and if you can do anything to bring them back and make them usable you know I'm all for it and I do like the bluing and this stuff, it says let it set for 30 seconds and then wipe dry and then uh, four out or one out steel wool or something. I use four out. I'm letting this sit longer. I and mean, this pretty much was a worthless hatchet. Now it's going to actually work. It's going to be a nice little. I'll probably wind up giving this away the end of this year for Christmas. Pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. I know it's February, but unlike most people, I plan way ahead of time. I hate to be caught with my drawers down. When I do a job, I plan my job. I get everything out that I need. There's a phrase I learned when I was a kid, don't walk over your footsteps. Put everything out there, get everything on the job you need so you don't have to walk back to the truck or walk back to the toolbox to get something which you should have had it there in the first place. Time is money. If you waste time, especially if you're paying yourself, you're an idiot. This is going to turn out nice. I know it's got scratches and dings in the metal, but I don't care. Let's see if I can get a real quick high buff on it. That looks pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, look, you can see all the scratches and dings in it, but it doesn't matter. The metal is protected to a certain point. I mean, this is not, I mean, if you left it set outside, it, it will still rust, but it does give it protection from when you're using it. And then you, you know, wipe it off and then put it in your toolbox. It's not gonna sit there in the back of your truck. It's just not gonna rust into a solid chunk. The bluing helps protect it. And we had some pretty bad freezes here uh, 
two weeks ago here in Oklahoma and I talked to one of my buddies at the feed store the other day and he said he he watched my video and didn't realize he had an axe so he took his axe when he busted ice for the cows in the in the troughs he used uh, the ice and then he, he said he stepped in the pond and used it to break the ice up so the cows could get it in the pond and get water to drink he said he never thought he'd been using a shovel he said I never thought about using an axe that out I mean I think it looks pretty good I mean if you if you didn't know it you bought this in the store you just think it was just a you know rough manufactured item all right let's see about I'm not gonna clean it I'm not gonna wipe it off I'm just gonna go ahead and restain it Call it stain, re-blew it. I don't care what you want to call it. It's kind of like staining wood. Pouring rain outside. Weeds are growing already. The hen bit, rye grass, fescue is starting to grow really good right now. Even starting to see clover come up. We had four deer in our front yard this morning or last night. We hadn't seen a rabbit in a while. We got a we got a pretty good group of hawks out there. They're keeping the rabbit population down pretty good. All right, let's. Uh, I'll do this two more times and then. Uh, or one more time and then uh, we'll come back and set the hatchet all right guys I got a wood shim here I don't know what kind of wood this is anyways got this uh, bunch of wood shims from Big Life he sent me and uh, I'm definitely using them because it's hard to find them around here so uh, let's see how far I can seat this see what we get Hang on, grab a hammer. See how far I can get it in there. All right. Y'all don't need to see my face. Just need to see the tool. That's the star of the show. hate box knives. I have the worst cuts with a box knife than anything. Tell you what, the worst cut ever had, sheet metal. 26 gauge sheet metal. 
That stuff will rip you open. You don't think you're even cut. All right, let's see how much more I can get here. I think that's it. It's on there pretty good. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Now, I need to set the shim in there and drive it home. Or try to, anyways. Let me get my other hammer and I'll show you beating this thing in. Alright, got it sitting on my little homemade anvil. I'm going to drive it home. For those of you who don't have a stubby handled hammer, you got to get one. It works so good. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. She's in there. Okay, let me take it to the little bandsaw and cut that off, and then uh, we'll put a metal shim in it. I like it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to do, I've never done this before. But I've heard of people using shell casings as a shim. I'm going to try it. Right. Hang on. Yeah, let me cut this down because I've been it. Be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I've got it started. Let's see how it goes. It's not a loaded shell. I got it in there quite a bit. So I'm going to cut that off. Oh, I got to get in camera. Sorry, guys. I'll cut it off and then clean it up. Never done that before. Back in the day, uh, framing, you know, when you did framing houses and stuff, guys, some guys would only have one hammer. If the hammer came loose, we didn't have any shim or metal shims to use or he couldn't reuse what was in it something I've seen a guy use a piece of conduit a small piece of conduit and that's what he had in his truck and he oblonged it and tapped it in and that's what he used to shim so and it was a small piece now this is a this was a big it was a 28 ounce hammer uh, most guys most guys I worked with back in the day used big hammers so I was the only little guy on the cruise. All right, guys, tell me that ain't cool. <laughs> I think it's a nine millimeter. I don't care. It's, it's, I cut off the end of the shell casing. Um, I don't even know where the end went. Hang on, let me see. Okay, all I can read on it, SIG. Anyways, pretty cool. <laughs> I cut the end of that. I, that worked pretty good. Big Life sent me a couple of cartri empty cartridges and uh, or shell cases and then there was uh, a bunch of metal shims and stuff in there. So anyways, that's what I use. I'm uh, linseed oiling the handle. That's all I'm going to do. And what I'll do is I'll linseed oil this thing uh, every day for the rest of the week. And then, supposed to do it, I think I was told once a day for a week, 
and then once a month, and then once a year. Like you take pick your birthday month, and then just cover, just coat all your your wood handle tools with linseed oil once a year, just to keep the wood from loosening up. I know a lot of guys back in the old days, if they uh, on job site, they used their hammers. They uh, they carry linseed oil. And yeah, some of you guys probably wouldn't care. You don't use hammers as much as back as we used to, but I still use a hammer quite a bit. I use a hatchet all the time. I cook outside, so I always have wood. I always have at least a rick of wood in my house because I have to cook. I cook over an open pit. Best way to eat a steak, over good, just raw fire wood. All right, let's uh, let this sit for a while. We'll come back to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of this video. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little wax on this. It's been sitting a while. Might as well throw some wax on the red paint. It's already, uh, I've already marred it up, scratched it, beat it up. So I guess it's not gonna do any good really. Oh well. Axe turned out pretty nice. This one, I'm not sure. I, I gotta look in the in their mic magnifying glass and see who made this one. Let me look under the magnifying glass. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you guys can read it, but it says the Acme solid steel, which I've never seen that before. Anyways, this handle, okay, this handle I was gonna put on this hatchet and I changed my mind I don't like okay this is a working tool right here this this one here I like the handle the way it's shaped uh, this one works great for stripping the the uh, limbs off the tree branches and then uh, you know cutting the kindling up this I don't like the handle. I don't like straight handles. I don't know what it is about it. it I do not like straight handles. I, I can't tell you why. It's just, I don't like them. But, right, this something like this, I got one similar to this at work, and I use it for a deconstruction. When I tear a wall out or tear something up, this is what I use. I use something like this. Now, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but, I use it as a working tool. Blade on it, really good shape. I mean, there was, except for pitting and damage on this one, you can see some pitting, and that's why I painted it. It, uh, there's such deep, 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 deep pitting in it. I just painted it. It's not a piece of art. This one, this one I'll probably give away as a gift. See, welded the back end of it. Polished, it's not the best. I mean, you can see 
little pitting in there. Uh, Pores, that's from the welding. But hey, it looks good. It's good. It didn't cost, you know, I think I got like 40 cents in this one and I got a dollar in this one. I'm pretty sure I got. I can't remember, it's been so long. But I, 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 I have less than uh, a couple bucks in both of these. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, two good working tools. Now I am gonna soak these a couple more days with linseed oil. And like I said, I do not like, I'll show you all my, all my hammers, all my uh, hatchets and everything are just coated in linseed oil and just natural wear. I don't, I don't like the varnish. I'm not a big fan of any varnish. So that's why this was a new handle and I scraped it off. It just looks better and feels better. And this handle is actually very, very pretty. It has a good grain look to it. I like this one. Uh, yeah, oh, the blade on this one's good shape. Oh, yeah, I was gonna get the force. I'll, I'll put that in my comments. There's a website. You, got, you guys that like to do a little bit of reading, you really need to look up this website. It's the Forestry Service uh, on axes and they have a section. Go down to the section where it shows sharpening axes, and oh my God, there's so much information. I'm an idiot. I'm a total idiot when it comes to these axes. Uh, I, I, I know very little except how to use them. Uh, but I learned a lot in that section, so I'll put that in the comments or in the description. It's a website, you'll have to go to it. It's if you do, like doing a little bit of reading, uh, just, just the sharpening part of it. It gives a lot of descriptions on axes and the shapes and uh, sharpening. Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm very dumb when it comes to these things. And like I was told, just take a file and just hit it. Well, there is, It'll, that'll get you by, but if you really want to learn, there's a, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the description and you guys need to, if you want time to do a little reading, it is a very, very good read on how to sharpen and how to take care of your axes, uh, which is pretty cool. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not very good at this, but I still salvage some junk tools and now they're good usable tools. I, I don't care who you are, you can still use that. It's, it's, it's not the best sharp, uh, but it'll get the job done. I won't be hacking through anything. It'll actually cut a little bit. And I got, I wish this weather would get warmer because I need to cut some wood to uh, get ready to start cooking because spring's gonna be here and we'll be cooking outside quite a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Thumbs up, thumbs down. This video's long, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. Just fast forward with whatever you want to watch. Subscribe if you like. Thanks now.